look alive, people. It's three, five derivatives continuing on, but now getting to trigonometric functions. So we've talked about these a little bit already. We explored the graph of sine and the derivative of that um, also with cosine a little bit. Uh, that was back in 3, 2, and even with limits in 2, 2, and 2, 3. Let's review really quick some of the limits that we did with sine and cosine, and then we'll get to the derivatives of sine and cosine with our first two theorems, 3, 5, 1, A and B, and 3, 5, 2, A and B. If you can pause and fill these in without looking them up in your notes, great. You already have some of this stuff memorized. Awesome. More power to you. If not, catch up, Mustard. We got a relish in this. No, it's okay. We'll, we'll get to it. That's what this section is all about. But by the end of this chapter, we got to have as much of these derivatives memorized as we can. I liken it to the multiplication tables in elementary school. You just had to have those memorized. It made things easier. Well, by the end of this chapter, the more you have memorized, the easier it's going to be. Not only at the very end of this chapter, but into next in chapter four. So go ahead and pause it, see if you can fill those out. Otherwise, I'll give you the answers once again as a review. First two there, the limit of sine x over x as we were approaching zero. We did this numerically and found that the thing that we were approaching was one. We also then did it for one minus cosine of x all over x, again approaching zero, but that one came out zero. These will help us. Down the road, we will revisit these once more, but not just yet. We want to get to the derivatives of both sine and cosine. And again, hopefully you remember from a while back when we did some problems where we had to graph the derivative of sine. Hopefully you remember that it came out cosine of x. And the derivative graph of cosine actually was negative sine of x. Now, the others of these graphically aren't as nice because they are not continuous like sine and cosine are. They have asymptotes. And so what we're going to do for the remaining four trig functions is use our limit definition for the derivative to come up with each and every one of these. So do me a favor, pause it. Try these on your own before just watching the rest where I go through it. And I'll do the first one with you slowly. The rest of them I will just give to you to pause and go through on your own. But again, please try them on your own first. That will be better off in the end rather than you just watching and being, okay, I got it. Let's move on. Don't forget either way, you're going to have to memorize these. So hopefully you came up with, now you could be robotic and just do exactly what it says and take the derivative of tangent using our x plus h and f of x all over h as h approaches zero limit derivative definition and have to do a bunch of arm waving just to get here and then get stuck. Or you could think a little bit more intuitively and say, I don't want to have to use a sum identity for tangent and then have to multiply and do all this other stuff, you know what? Instead, I'm going to do this and simply rewrite tangent in terms of sines and cosines and do the quotient rule instead. So there's your hint. I'll leave you with that for the rest of these. Go ahead and give these a try, and then I'll come back and go over this one and then leave the rest for you to do and just give you because they've already been proven. They are theorems, the derivative of cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Good luck. And if you look at that one little trick that we rewrote tangent to sines and cosines, even though it was a quotient rule, bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Don't lose that negative with the sine. All over the bottom squared, we know that this results in cosine squared of x. A negative times a negative becomes positive sine x times sine x is sine squared, which we know this is the Pythagorean identity all over that, which we can therefore write as secant squared of x, right? Go ahead and try that for the rest of these if you'd like, rewriting cotangent as cosine over sine, secant as one over cosine, 
and cosecant as one over sine and just using a quotient rule instead of trying to do the limit definition. Hopefully you came up with these. If not, we can go through them at a later time or I can create a side video that just has the derivations of these or feel free to look them up. But again, pretty simple stuff. Notice sometimes we get negatives and notice when those are are for the co-functions. Each one of these has two functions with them. Two of them are just the same. To derive a tan, you gotta wait a couple seconds out in the sun. For the rest of these cotangent, you get negative cosecant. For secant, you get itself and the tangent, secant x tangent x. And then cosecant, same thing, you get itself and then the cotangent. So a lot of things that you can do to help yourself memorize these, but the more you memorize, the better off and faster you're going to be down the road when you have to use them. And because the title of this was just simply the derivatives of the trigonometric functions, and we've now accomplished that, there are a few other things that I want to add in here as well, such as how do we apply these trig functions and their derivatives. So remember we talked a lot about the position function. If we took the derivative of it, it gave us either the velocity or acceleration, uh, depending on how many times we took the derivative. And those were what we called the higher order derivatives. So we talked about acceleration being the second derivative of our position function. Are we able to continually take the derivative and go to acceleration and then jerk or a fifth, a sixth, the nth derivative? Well, we knew that a polynomial function, we had that power rule. And the power rule showed us that whatever power the original function was when we took the derivative, it would be one less whatever the degree was, the highest power. So eventually, if you do it enough times, we would end up getting a constant and getting a zero from then on. How would that work with trig functions? Would it be the same, where we can only take the derivative so many times? Well, let's start with the polynomial function and see if we can figure that out, where our highest power is in. How many times would we be able to take the derivative? We knew it would be n plus one times, one more than that to get to that constant to then zero out from there on. Well, then would we be able to do the same thing with a trig function? Let's say cosine of x. Try to take the derivative of this as many times as you can and see if you find a pattern or an end such as a zero. Go ahead and pause it and give that a try real quick. So if you started working these out, you hopefully saw a pattern and stopped. Okay, if you keep going and do the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th derivative, you're going to get the exact same values. And I tried to color coordinate them so that you could see. After I took my original function, I just chose cosine. And I took the first derivative. I know that's negative sine. Now, the second derivative or derivative of that, I know is the derivative of sine is cosine. And because it's negative, it's going to stay negative where the derivative of that, which is cosine, is negative sine. But because I have a negative out in front already, the double negative would have canceled and gotten back to the positive sign. And we know the derivative of that is cosine, and remember that's where we started. So you can see every four derivatives, this thing is what is called cyclical, right? It goes in this cycle of repetitiveness and will continue to do so indefinitely. So unlike that of a polynomial, these are a bit different. So keep that in mind. We'll keep working on these. Start memorizing them as best as you can. Hopefully you already have the sines and cosines. Now we just need to add on the other four. Tangent, which is secant squared. Cotangent, which is negative cosecant squared. Secant, which is secant tangent. And cosecant, which is negative cosecant cotangent. If we can start memorizing these, well, then of course we will add on more stuff. And you're like, well, what if I don't memorize them? Can we stop it? Sorry, we're going to have to do it regardless. So the faster you start memorizing these, the better off you will be. Keep working hard, my friends. Almost done with this differentiation section and chapter.
of both trig functions and all the different variations and types that we will get to. Three six on deck, hope to see you there.